All right, hey, shalom, Akim, shalom. First and foremost, as always, before we get started, giving our praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rukha HaKodash. Double honors unto the apostles, the bishops, and the elders of Great Millstone that have taught us the truth and that rule well. And peace and blessings go out to the hopeful members of the elect scattered throughout the four winds of the earth that are in the hopes of receiving salvation and mercy during the time of Jacob's trouble, and that are worshiping the Heavenly Father in sincerity, in spirit, and in truth. All right. Now, in this lesson, as you can see in the title, Stopping So Emotional. All right. And in this lesson, I want to pretty much, uh, you know, pinpoint upon the fact about within us standing for Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai in a world full of nothing but perverse behavior. We're constantly having our flesh have all these roller coasters of, of emotions, you know. At times we're irritated, we're pissed off, we're mad. We want to just get, you know, carnal. And at the end of the day, all those emotions, brethren, are, they're valid, you know. Because at the end of the day, pursuant to um, Ezekiel, the ninth chapter, all right, we're supposed to be found in a spirit of sign and crying. All right, of wanting to get up out of here, you know, but something that isn't valid is you acting upon those emotions and allowing it to change your behavior. All right, as Apostle Paul said, all right, we can be mad, but we can't sin. All right, I forget where uh, exactly that scripture is, but this is the premise of what kind of attitude we're supposed to have in this uh, lot. All right, because as we now represent Hawashai and our representatives of who he is, we got to go through the same course of life that he went through. All right, when you read about what Yahawashai went through, man, you understand that he had those emotions too. All right, but he never acted upon them. All right, there were points where Yahawashai was about to, you know, snap. All right, like when he went into the temple, you know. I remember Apostle Gabar had made the point that that's where uh, Yahweh Shai broke character, all right? He was pissed the hell off, all right? But throughout his lot, he never allowed his emotions to get the best of him, all right? There were points where you could see the flesh kicking in, but he always examined himself, you know? And throughout our history, all of our forefathers went through same uh, the same scenarios, all right. So as we've now entered into their labors, we now have to associate ourselves with the same pattern of work. All right. Of walking in the spirit and not allowing the flesh get the best of us and try to be, uh, you know, not allowing it to do what we, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not allowing it to control us. All right. So with that being said, Lord, Lord, this is an edifying lesson to you, brothers and sisters. Uh, what really inspired this lesson was Apostle Gobar's video that he did yesterday concerning the testimony of the relationship of his father. All right. Apostle Gobar exhorted us brothers to make peace with their fathers, you know. And if you haven't watched that lesson, I recommend you brothers go watch it because Apostle Gobar makes the point that he didn't like his father. You know, he hated his father because of how he uh, conducted himself. But as Apostle Gobar said, he never showed him any kind of disrespect, you know. He honored his father. And as Apostle Gabar said, later on in his life, he uh, made amends with his father. And pursuant to the scriptures, he received his father's blessing, you know. And, you know, some of us brethren don't have a father figure in our life. But as we're now honoring Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, our spiritual father, the Heavenly Father puts us in scenarios where we can exhibit and receive spiritual blessings from him. All right, and it all boils down with how you act. All right. So with that being said, uh, the first scripture that I want to grab is in the book of Galatians, chapter five and sixteen. But in the NLT, it says, "So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives." All right. Now, a part of allowing the Holy Spirit be the guide of how you conduct your life is you applying. The wisdom that we receive via our forefathers and what they've experienced all right 
a beautiful example that pops up in my mind is uh, David and wicked King Saul. All right. As you read First Samuel, you understand that King Saul was trying to kill David based upon his emotions. Okay. And that's off. All right. Because King Saul was in the wrong. But a beautiful example of what we should do is what David did. All right. Because David understood that he was blameless. All right. He did nothing wrong, wrong to King Saul. And David had every right to kill, uh, you know, wicked King Saul. But through David honoring the Heavenly Father, he understood that that was the first king of our nation, you know? So David never laid one hand upon him, all right? Which shows forth what a man of integrity is truly all about. Although he may have his emotions being stirred up in his head about, man, this dude is, you know, he's in the wrong this, that, and the third. You got to think about what you're about to do and detach yourself from what your flesh wants you to act off, uh, act off on, all right? And allow the spirit to be what guides you, all right? There were many instances where David prayed, you know, he would reflect on, damn, should I really do this? You know? These are the same characteristics that we got to apply within our lives, Akim, because we're found in those same scenarios where we're mad, you know? But just because you're mad doesn't mean that you got to cuss out, you know, the Edomite in front of you, all right? Just because you're sad doesn't mean that you got to go get a, bio, a, a bottle of wine and drink the whole thing. And, you know, walk in the spirit. And first and foremost, this lesson goes to myself because this is a, a action that we're all working on. All right? Because none of us are perfect. We're in these chains of darkness that subject us to vanity. All right? But we understand how to check ourselves and get better. All right? So it says, this I say then going to the KJV now. Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. Okay? And the spirit against the flesh. <laughs> and this is a battle that's constantly happening within our minds, Akiam. Alright? Where, you know, there's certain scenarios where we do want to do righteousness, but at the end of the day, we fall short and do the thing that we don't want to do. As Apostle Paul, you know, explains. It's a lot. Like I had a call come in, but, um, yeah, let me read that one more time. It says, for the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. All right. And like I was saying, Apostle Paul describes that he went through the same thing of having this inward uh, battle. All right. Always having these little agitations with certain uh, predicaments that the Lord puts us in. All right, but this is where we got to have the word of the Heavenly Father in us, all right, and exhibit and act upon what we've been learning, okay? As the book of James tells us, we got to learn and be doers of the word and not just hearers, all right? So it says, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you, uh, that you would. Okay, now let's read that in the NLT because it says it in a very, uh, you know, beautiful fashion that is real as hell. <laughs> it says the sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. All right. And it's a constant fight happening in our uh, spirit. All right, the spirit grappling with the flesh and always trying to win us over with something that we don't want to do, you know. It says, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions, but when you are directed by the spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger. These are all things that we exhibit at times, Akiam. <laughs> it says uh, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkness, all right? 
throughout the emotions that we feel, you know, the flesh is telling you to do shit like this, okay? But that's where you have to have that spiritual discernment and tell yourself, fuck no, all right? You got to cuss yourself out. I remember the beloved, uh, you know, Elder Mike Gala had made the point that he cusses himself at times, you know? And that's real because I do the same thing, you know? It's, it's something that we all go through, you know? And people look at us crazy for doing so because they don't know what we're fighting against, all right? As Apostle Paul said in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, all right, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness, the principles of what this world stands for, so on and so forth, okay? It's a constant psychological warfare that we're up against, all right? But through the Spirit, the Heavenly Father, through His Son, our Lord Yahweh has given us all we need, all right? And that's the Spirit and his word that comes along with the spirit man all right constantly exercising what we learn all right so from there i'm going to keep reading but i wanted to give forth an example from a character in star wars that um you know suffers the consequences of walking in the uh, walking in the flesh all right for brothers that may know you know the franchise of star wars um Anakin Skywalker was a good uh, Jedi, you know? He had the fight and the spirit of a warrior in him, but something that downtracked him and made him join the dark side was the flesh, all right? The emotion of him having love for his mother, all right? That love ultimately made him have a compassion and remorse to do anything for his uh his wife okay so let me play this clip real quick and of course satan wants to restart the shit thank you yo i just to lock you yep it's right here afraid are you no sir see through you we can be mindful of your feelings your thoughts dwell on your mother. I miss her. Mm -hmm. Afraid to lose her, I think. Mm -hmm. What does that got to do with anything? Everything. And that's the point, all right? He feared to lose his mother, all right? Because during this time, he was taken far, far away from his mom, all right? And he didn't want to lose her. Because he was, uh, you know, as you get into the story... Uh, Star Wars, all right, Anakin Skywalker didn't have a father, all right, so he was a mama's boy, and a lot of us brethren, we tend to be in that same category of being mama's boys, all right, to the point where we're very emotional, but we can't have that mentality, Akiyam, all right, because as, uh, you know, Yoda is saying, if you have those emotions, it can deter you from your destiny of being a true servant of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. All right, it matters a lot. Fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. And as uh, you know, within every state and every camp, you know. The apostles, the bishops, and elders of Great Millstone always give us testimonies of people that have fallen from the truth and tell us that it was always a snowball effect with them, you know? Where at first it started with this, then it led to something worse, and throughout them giving into the flesh and allowing their emotions play out on how they conduct themselves, they end up falling out of the truth, okay? Same thing with what happened to Anakin Skywalker, all right? Because of the love that he had for his mother, all right, he held that same sentiment for his wife, all right? And through the fear that he had of losing his wife that fell sick, he started doing a bunch of wicked shit, okay? And he ended up joining the dark side, and his vision became blurry, all right? I 
Anakin, he, he was through, you know, the fear of lost, all right, led him to be uh, Darth Vader, all right, and we can't have that happen to us, Akyam, all right, and at the end of the day, man, we stand for Yahweh Bahashim Yahawashai, all right, as we're now joint heirs of Yahawashai, a part of that, um, you know, inheritance is the sufferings, okay? People be driving stupid nowadays, man. Salakia. Like but a part of that is the sufferings that Yahweh Shah had to go through, man. All right? Whether you like it or not, you have to go through what Yahweh Shah went through, okay? And the disciples during the time of Acts are the proof in the pudding of just that, man. All right? I remember the beloved, uh, I forget what the name of the brother from Dallas. He had just done a video concerning, uh, you know, the fact of us having to go through the same things that Yahweh I went through. And in the beginning of his lesson, he played a slideshow concerning the fate of what the disciples had to go through. You know, some of the disciples were beheaded. They were put on crosses. They were put in, uh, you know, cauldrons of oil and being cooked to life all right the disciples caught hell all right and through the spirit well not through the spirit all right because according to what's written we got to go through the same thing okay whether you like it or not this is what you've signed up for all right and if you, if you decide to look back all right you're a disgrace to yahweh bashim yahweh shai man all right, straight up and down, because at the end of the day, Yahweh Shai is the man. That's the father. I'm sorry. That's the son of the father. All right. And he gave himself up as a sacrifice for our nation. All right. And if you're saying that you can't do something as letting go of a woman, letting go of a job, letting go of some kind of affair in this world, you're a weak man. All right, and like I said, you're a disgrace to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man, and you're gonna have to pay for that. All right, we're in the time where the Lord is about to start judging people, man. And if you can't let go of these mortal thoughts that have gotten a toll on you, you better pray, you better fast, and examine the hell out of yourself, man. All right, because we're in this truth off of the sheer purpose of carrying on the legacy of what our nation is about okay we're not doing this for some kind of vain glory we're doing it because this is what our nation is about man all right a nation that is uh you know tailored to suffer okay we were born to go through shit like this all right excuse my language but you look at our forefathers in the old all of them went through some kind of suffering uh, phase man okay this is what our nation is about. And if you can't get with what we're about, then kick rocks, man. All right? Because we really, truth be told, haven't faced anything in this life yet. All right? We haven't been tempted uh, to uh, blood. Okay? We still got a long journey ahead of us, Akyam. The Heavenly Father is just putting us through little... Uh, trials and increments of suffering so that we can prepare ourselves for what is about to come. All right. So, so lucky I got a little carried away there, but you know, that's the spirit. Okay. We're coming into a time where sacrifices are going to have to be made on a very large scale. All right. And if you're walking in the flesh, those sacrifices are something that are going to be a burden unto you. All right? And you don't want to be in that spirit. Okay? And like I said, if you are in that spirit, read about our forefathers. Read about what they had to forsake and compare yourself to what the fuck you got. All right? Because compared to them, they had more to lose. 
all right? But nonetheless, through their faith in the Heavenly Father and through their belief, they did it, all right? Because they'd rather choose to suffer now, you know, as Moses, you know? He chose to suffer with this nation than have some measly little authority in the author uh, in the kingdom of Egypt, you know? We're in the same stead where brothers had that, you know, lot where they could have made something big for themselves in this world, but they chose the way of righteousness rather than the way of malice, all right? So let's keep reading. Let's jump down a little into verse uh, 22, all right? <clears throat> verse 22, it says, But the, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. If you're really walking in the Spirit, these are characteristics that you're going to exhibit, all right? Now, I'll say this, you know, we're men of honor, all right? Men that love riches. There's nothing wrong with having those kind of, you know, desires. But at the end of the day, there's a time and a season for everything, Akiyam, all right? We're not in the time to be sitting on thrones, drinking wine out of, you know, 24 karat gold cups, okay? We're in the time where we got to play out the fact of what Yahawashai did, all right? The servant is not greater than the master, okay? So we got to go through it. We got to go through everything that Yahawashai had to go through, okay? Like I said, read about what Yahawashai had to go through, man, and put yourself in the same shoes as his and examine yourself, okay? It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Yahawashites have, have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts, okay? If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit, all right? Now, I want to look up those two uh, definitions in the Greek for live and walk. For the word live, it goes back to the Strong's G2198. To live, breathe, all right? To have true life and worthy of the name, okay? What's a true life in the eyes of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai? Walking in righteousness, walking in the spirit. That's what true living is about, okay? This is a practice that we're slowly but surely coming back into, okay? So that once we're in the kingdom, we know how to do it like, uh, you know, secondhand nature. So it says active, blessed, all right, in the manner of the living and acting of mortals or character, all right, and that's the point, okay? Now let's look up walk. It goes back to the Strong's G 4748, Stoikeo, and it says to proceed in a row as the march of a soldier, okay, go in order. And that's, in, uh, you know, in essence, what Apostle Paul had said to Timothy, all right? We're soldiers in this thing, man, all right? Whatever we're faced with, we got to march forward and understand that there's a task to be accomplished, all right? There's a mission that has to be finished, okay? To direct one's life to live, all right? Point blank period. So let's finish this off. It says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another, all right? Once again, read about what Yahweh went through and compare yourself to what he's done, all right? And start, matter of fact, let's get First Peter 4 and 1, all right? Because Peter beseeks us to have the same mentality as Yahweh Shai, all right? First Peter chapter 4 and 1, it says, For as much then as Yahweh Shai suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, all right? For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, all right? Point blank, period. 
This is what this is about, man. Take it or leave it. This is what your life is all about now. All right? Of suffering in the flesh for the purpose of you obtaining an incorruptible crown. All right? If you have faith, that sounds good to me. Okay? So from there, let me get a quick scripture in the book of Proverbs chapter 9 and 5, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, Proverbs 9 and 5, it says, Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine which I have mingled. All right? And in essence, if you can receive it, King Solomon is Yahawashai. Why? Because at the last Passover, Yahawashai said the same thing. Okay? When he broke the bread and, you know, uh, gave the cup of wine... All right, what did he say? Let's get that real quick in 1 Corinthians uh, 24. But I want to go to the point where Yahweh had said it. I think it was at the Passover. Matter of fact, let me just read it right here. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and 24, it says, And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, all right? This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me, all right? And this also reminds you of Ezekiel, uh, the third chapter, all right? Where the angel, uh, let's get that real quick. <clears throat> you know what? I'm mistaking this with uh Right, Silak. I'm mistaking that with uh John the Revelator. Alright. When John the Revelator obtained the little book from the angel, alright, and ate it up. It was sweet in his belly, but then it became bitter, all right? But it's synonymous for what? Eating of the bread of Yahawashai so that it's a set remembrance of what he did, chips, all right? And now doing the same thing that he did, all right? It says, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken of you. I'm sorry, Salaki, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you also as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. All right? And where the blood is, there is life. All right? And by us walking in the Spirit, what does that produce, Akiyam? Life. Okay? Through Yahweh Shai's sacrifice, all right, what did we obtain? The Spirit. The Comforter. Okay? The vessel and the power that is within us to obtain and commit the same pattern of good works that Yahweh Shai did, all right? So with that, Lord's will, this was an edifying lesson for you brothers and sisters, all right? You know, just emphasizing upon that point though, Aki, I'm just, you know, throughout your day-to-day -day life, always detaching your emotions from your behavior, all right? It's something that we all exercise and at times we may slip up, all right? But as the scriptures tell us, a righteous man, you know, gets himself up, cleans his garment, all right? Roughly paraphrasing. And, you know, disregards it and learns from his mistakes, all right? So with that, giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha HaKodash, Double honors unto the apostles, the bishops, and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings unto the elect. Shalom.